overall, it's a great event, you know, eight matches. It's good to see that, like, uh, the Japanese are still kind of holding, not like huge events, but like, are still like fostering high level uh, play. And like, there's a, there was another one uh, in 2020, like a few others, but there was like another long set, I believe it was like with uh, Daigo versus Nuki hmm. in five, I'm pretty sure. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Nuki, uh, Nuki does Nuki play five. I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, not nearly as much as no, like not nearly Daigo, as much as Daigo. <laughs> Daigo, that's a full time job for Daigo. Yeah, yeah. Where he's practicing but, um, with punishes with sweep, which is incredibly dangerous in five, but <laughs> you know it works. But yeah, yeah. No, the the co op cup is a, a really fun watch. Highly recommended for fighting game enthusiasts. Uh, super swagu, um, especially if you're an, if you're a third strike fan. Um, Hayao, so much fun to watch. Probably the best Hugo besides um, uh, YSB. Mm-hmm. Uh, the both of them parry monsters. Nuki's, oh, you know, if you know Nuki, fucking one of the gods. Mm-hmm. Best Chun probably ever. Um, at least a third strike for sure. Who else is in there? RX, Great Urian. Uh, I wish they had Koku Jin, but they had another really good Dudley. They had this great set with this one Ryu too. Like it was like a Ryu versus uh, I always, Makoto set. I always really like watching Ryu in Third Strike because he he, it's like him and Makoto. Like when you see players play them, they look so cheap. They look so effortless. Where they because because with Makoto you have the command grab into the crit, uh, into the super art BS, which is hard as shit. But like you know it, it just looks so effortless. And then Ryu is like. He just gains that meter, gets one blocked hit into fireball uh, super dungeon, art yeah. dungeon, and it's like, oh, yeah. guess what? You're nearly stunned and dead. <laughs> and he yeah, that, and he basically set. gains half of another uh, super art in the follow up yeah, combo. The, it's so ridiculous. <laughs> it's super aggressive, and the set between this Ryu and this Makoto in co op cup is like a really fun one to watch. Like they're both super sick, and the fucking. Um, I really like the yeah, you know, like I said, like like you said, like I really like Ryu and Makoto's design in the game and that particular matchup, the way they had set it up, because like Denjin Ryu is a whole other animal besides normal Ryu. Mm-hmm. And same thing with Makoto. If you take, you know, um if you take Super R two or like the kick, yeah, where it goes into that, that's like the stun that's the stun super basically. Yeah. Like you do that and like if you do it properly on most characters, you'll get them almost entirely to stun. Um, if not, or if they already have some stun pre existing, they're there. Yeah. Um, except for Akuma, you don't need anything. If, it's, if Akuma's raw and you hit him with that, he's already stunned. He's dead. Mm-hmm. Um, Akuma can't take a hit from Makoto um, if she has meter. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that, that shit is crazy, yeah. and it was uh, a lot of fun. And same thing with like on the other end with Ryu, like you get fucking mixed, you get schmixed, and you get fucking yeah. Denjin on you. You're done. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, that's do you a think, great set. Do you think mm-hmm. the bre- uh, not the brevity of the tournament, but like the limited amount of third strike you see kind of heightens this one moment, this one tournament for the year? Mm, not really, because I'm, well, probably maybe for other people, mm-hmm. but not for me okay. and it's, as an individual, because <laughs> that's fair. I don't really not see, like, I don't, there isn't an, an infrequency of third strike for me. Oh, okay. Like, I watch, like, I, well, I've been talking with you, I like, I see old school games far more often then, like, the games I see are, like, like, unlimited match or two, you know? Mm-hmm. I see, and we play CBS 2, MVC 2, Third Strike. Like, the only modern game I watch and play is Tekken 7. Right. That's it. Mm-hmm. Like, from the fighting game community. Yeah. That's it. That's always so, so interesting to me, and I know we've had this, like, brief discussion on, like, modern versus older fighting games. And I do have to wonder if it comes down to the pacing of of stuff, um, but I, I think that's a whole. Probably. I think that's a whole topic that deserves a better analysis that a sleep deprived invi- individual like myself cannot give at this time. <laughs> yeah, uh, at some point we'll probably try and have a maybe full fledged conversation. Maybe, about that, but, but for anybody who's just listening, yeah, if you, if you like Third Strike or if you've heard of it, uh, Street Fighter Third Strike, I should say. Cooperation Cup was just this past weekend. Um, the stream is over, and it is a fun eight-man round robin tournament, I believe. It's not a tournament. It's just a uh, eight exhibitions. It's eight exhibitions. Eight. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. It's eight first to ten third strikes. Super high quality 
matches if you guys are into that sort of thing mm -hmm. definitely go check it out i'm pretty sure you can go check out the vod for like nothing go to game newton on twitch yeah. or just like look up cooperation cup on youtube and you'll yeah it's usually up uploaded now, they'll, they'll be up eventually it's usually uploaded by a channel that's just called third strike <laughs> like you don't yeah, yeah. you almost it's, think capcom runs it um i know right so but yeah it, it's, it's a really good business event. like that's what's so cool about japan is like it's small enough where all these hobbyists can just like easily kind of get together year after year and i'm sure most of them live in like the vicinity of wherever it's held i assume it's tokyo but i could be entirely wrong um i'm pretty sure that yeah, yeah it's it takes place in tokyo and mm -hmm. and, and uh, at a popular like arcade area mm -hmm. um i'll have to double check i know that yeah. like that information is like out there but yeah yeah like japan is a very excess like the, the like, transportation the public transportation like, there like across doing the entire shit like that like super costs convenient a lot of money in the united states i feel like getting punk and like 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 at the sfl production for example like that shit costs money because you need to fly everybody everywhere and you know the united states is a fucking hot mess at the moment and even if it wasn't it would still well cost that's all money. centralized right now isn't it like sfl is like all in one place right I believe. right right absolutely but what i'm saying is like even when even during a time when shit was not on fire uh, because of a pandemic like it costs money to have these people flown out for like an extended period of time and so it's like these events need to like bring in a lot of money and need to exist for an excess amount of time whereas cooperate uh cooperation cup is mm -hmm. like this like flash it's like it's like an it's like almost like a christmas gathering where everybody just gets together and huddles up in the <laughs> <laughs> huddles up around the warm glow of the arcade machine <laughs> as we watch these first attempt yep, yep. matches. There's something wholesome about it, and uh, that you just kind of oh, you, yeah, sure. you just yeah. kind of won't be able to get with the modern uh, e league style uh, FGC. They do do a lot of uh, weekly, like they do tournaments, like yeah. almost like a weekly, like like Wednesday night fights or something like that. They do a lot of content so like there's constantly third strike content that you can watch mm -hmm. from that channel but like this set of show matches from high level players you know nuki you know being like a god amongst you know you know one of the japanese gods so to speak of fighting games mm -hmm. um you get like really fantastic uh matches from this particular one that we quote but yeah i know what you mean like where there's a kind of like a distinction between like uh the the sort of I don't know. I don't want to use the term vibe. I, I but it's just the, like uh, that 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 commu that aspect of that community is the one that's often highlighted. Whereas for Street Fighter, it's mm -hmm. the professionals and the e esports crew and stuff like that. Although the online crew has yeah taken a bit of a, a, a step up in the stage because of uh, all this COVID shit, but. Uh, I, yeah. I'm I'm getting us, I'm getting us sidetracked. We've, all, we've been going on for about nine minutes about fighting games in this anime podcast. <laughs> so it's all good. We'll, we'll use some of this, but either way, yeah. for you know posterity's sake, you know what is up, internet. Welcome to the Otaku Remix Podcast. I'm Brando. That's Christopher House on the other end. Welcome to the first podcast of 2021. Holy Moses! God damn. <laughs> Yeah, it's weird. It still feels like exactly. 2020, <sighs> but it is. We are kind of in 2020 new game plus. As, so, you know, 2020 the, uh, HD remakes code uh, R. Super. Yeah, <laughs> 2020. Yeah, yeah, every, you know, other M. Just whatever you want to call it. rebellion of Lelouch or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> But um, yeah. R two, <laughs> yeah, R two. That's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Yeah, oy, yeah. Oy, oy. But anyway, championship edition, <laughs> champion yeah. edition. Excuse you. Yeah, champion edition, twenty twenty. But all the same, we're gonna try and come at it with the positivity that we can. Um, but it wasn't all bad. <laughs> it was full of at least. A lot of good anime. It was honestly a good year for anime. It was uh, looking right. back. Yeah. In 2020. Not that we're going to do that this entire episode, but just kind of mentioning it, just thinking about it. It was uh, a pretty solid year when I think about a lot of the fun moments. Um, even though there were delays, you know, through the, the middle chunk of the year due to COVID, uh, it definitely kind of ramped up finally, like in, for the fall and kind of just like spit everything out 
that it tried to hold back. And we still kind of got a full, wholesome year of anime. And, we'll, and at some point, probably definitely not today, because I think that both of our brains are not like at full capacity, so to speak. Yeah, we got other shit but, uh, we'll to do talk like about, a, too. A, a, we'll, we'll do like a year review yeah. at some point. We'll get to it. <laughs> we'll get to a year but, review. But yeah, looking ahead. Mm-hmm. Looking ahead. I wanted to speak, uh, spit a few ideas out for, for 2021 as we begin like uh, the winter season, mm. so to speak of 2021 indeed uh there's a few things all right i'm gonna shoot some uh some series that are coming out i want to hear your quick uh reactions excited not excited uh just give me like a like a a, a bullet point thought okay mm-hmm. go for it all right how do you feel about the promise neverland season two uh didn't see the first season uh i don't know to be honest like it's probably just going to continue to be good it's kind of at that point where shonen that's what shonen do they make they they get the good ips and they they make it work Mm -hmm. and then they just make it last forever and ever (laughs) unless they don't who knows you know did you see uh the quintessential quintuplets i did not i heard that it got it's it's a it's a very typical harem anime so like Oh, that's the that's the quad, right? It's not Quint, right? It is Quint. Four girls. No, it is Quintuple. That's Quint. Okay. Yes. Okay, because it's getting a sequel series, so I just wanted to make sure. Yep. No, don't worry. I got a guy in my Discord who brings it up every time, and I'm like, uh, and he's like, it's a really good harem, and I'm like, yeah, but it's still a harem. <sighs> I've heard of elements of it, but I thought that you were. I, if in back of my head, I was like, I think Chris has watched this. I'm not entirely sure. I'm gonna throw it out there and just see what sticks. Um, I'm pretty sure you have seen cells at work right no i have not watched that either but i did see i did see i did see like clips of the new thing and it's like they just like gender swapped a lot of stuff or maybe you can correct me uh there's two so there's like there's a normal like normal there's a cells at work season two kind of following as it was i believe let me see yeah i believe it's following the same uh white blood cell uh red blood cell um, and then there's a new one called Cells at Work Code Black, which I think has like a new red blood cell, white blood cell, like where one's a, where the white blood cell is a girl and the red blood cell is a guy. Um, and I don't know exactly what the distinguishing feature is. I think it's like stress hormones and other like weird fucking bodily drama. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> you know? like, but they're gonna never gonna top cells at work what anime. Osmosis Jones did, so I don't know why they even fucking try. <laughs> I know, right? It, it'll never touch the potential. If it's not of, inside of Bill of, Murray, of cellular... I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty fun though, honestly. It's it's very clever. But uh, yeah, that that's coming this season as well. There's a new volleyball anime. I won't spare. I'll spare you the the I'll spare the, you the question. It's that. <laughs> um, is it men or women? It's men. Okay, but it's not high No, it's not high okay. But it is a new volleyball anime. Mm-hmm. Probably writing the is it in of is it in the high Q cinematic universe? Can you tell me this? It should be, honestly, but it's not. <laughs> Could you fucking imagine a volleyball cinematic universe where it's like... Yes. Because <laughs> that's just that's just real-life sports. That's all that is I would that be point. completely content with like a sideshow. And speaking of sideshow, I'm looking right here, and there's a new light novel, Goblin Slayer Side Story. Uh, joyous occasion. Yeah, of I Dai love Katana. sides. I love side stories, and by love, I mean yeah. absolutely loathe. <laughs> yeah, unless they're unless they're, um, I don't know. They have to they, really kind of sell an it, interesting it, concept. It really, it really always reads because, like, if it's side fiction of what I don't care about, then I don't care about, obviously. Yeah, yeah. But if it's stuff I do story. care about, it's like like there's mm-hmm. side stories for JoJo, and it's like there's one about um. John, uh, excuse me, Joseph's father, who mm-hmm. is Jonathan's son. So it's the mm-hmm. missing link between one and two. And it goes into how he had a had a fight uh, with things that were 
beyond stands that were called beyonds and they're like named after movies and stuff it's like so it's just so out there and it's ugh, it it really a lot of it feels like rough draft pieces that are just made as like true filler for the downtime or to sell extra product or something you know Hey man, you gotta do what you gotta do in these. Nah, I know, these I know, I know. The, the industry is always demand. There is always demand for fans, <laughs> so it needs to be met. Few, I guess. Uh, yeah, there was a. I don't know why this brought my memory, but there were a few movies that were coming that I was interested in and I wanted to talk about. We we you watched a movie that I recommended recently, and we'll get to that in a second. Oh okay. Um, but um, I know G Kids and Co. They, they did the new Lupin movie. Remember you seen the, the trailers with Lupin the Lupin Third, Lupin right? the First. Lupin the Third, the first, yeah. Lupin the First, yes. And that one's really beautifully animated. G-Kids, thankfully, bringing it over to us, which is nice. Yeah, I think that just came available it, yeah, on streaming services like uh, this just, past week. Just past week, so definitely going to take a look at that. Um, yeah, for sure. I kind of miss, I kinda I miss that. Had a chance to see it. Yeah, I kind of miss like, Lupin. Um, gonna probably set aside some time if possible it looks i mean it's classic it, it yeah the animation is gorgeous as hell from the trailers and apparently all the reviews say it's really really beautiful but it's also kind of classic and like i kind of miss that right now that's what i was kind of missing from great pretenders it was just like not exactly filling that shoe being that proper cup of tay so definitely looking forward to that you know, kind of reminds me of it. Um, so G Kids is coming out with another movie, and I believe it's the first. It's the first 3D, um, first 3D movie from Miyazaki. Yes. Now Miyazaki's not directing. I believe his son's directing it, oh. but it's from Studio Ghibli. Okay. It's like Earwig and the Witch. Yes. And I don't know if if Ghibli and and G Kids like have like a intimate relationship. I or mean, like at that, this like point, or... G Kids is just like where G Kids is at a is at a p- point where Crunchyroll used to be, where they're mm-hmm. just on this kind of roll and they're catching up every job that the industry can throw at them. And I don't know. You're just gonna have to. We're just gonna wait and see if Funimation eats them up as well. <laughs> Or, I know, right? Or, Let's yeah, it's like, oh, we're everything. a partnership. Oh, we're taking some of your jobs. Oh, now you own us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I say that, that as if the CEOs aren't laughing themselves to the bank right now. But say, love you. I know, I know, right? It'd be what it be. Yeah, I only, remember, I only said that. I mean, it's, it's we didn't, we didn't get to talk to. about it. Because, like, yeah. when I think about Lupin the Third and then, like, G Kids, and then it kind of links back to Hayao Miyazaki, and I'm like, uh, I, didn't, I just wanted to know if there was some sort of connection because Miyazaki's first film ever was a loop on the third film. It was the Castle of Cagliostro oh, back in like really? 87 or something. Interesting. Yeah, it's a pretty good movie. Hmm. No, I wouldn't be surprised. All Lupin yeah, classic just... films are like either like boilerplate fine or like, you know, good in that classic sense. They never really push the boundaries of anything. It's never quite like that uh Romeo and Ju No, it was uh, the Count of Monte Cristo version of mm. the, the anime. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's never For, it's never going in that kind of direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's not like, like super innovative, but it reminds me sort of like a anime like Indiana Jones, like something yeah. just, like, just a fun thrill ride, roller coaster adventure, and then you kind of yeah, you get the safe landing at the end, but you know, you, you had fun. Mm-hmm. The the female changes every movie, like stuff like that. <laughs> but yeah, let me see. But you did watch ride your wave finally right finally well yeah like that movie came out in 2019 yeah 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 so, so that came out a years while ago, ago. and mm-hmm. uh you'd been pestering me here and there not too hard about it and uh i finally was like brando i have not watched any anime tell me what to watch and you told me to watch that so i finally did and it was good <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't quite the level of like cliched sentimentality that a lot of the 
more popular modern anime films have been. Um, but that being said, it still falls into some of the cliches and I, I don't know. It's like, it, it's one of these things where it's for me watching the film, I definitely got what was appealing about it, but I did have a hard time not so much sympathizing, but relating to a lot of the cast. Mm-hmm. And so I have just felt disconnected from a lot of it. That doesn't mean I didn't like it. And it's it's really nicely animated and has a rather unique art style um, for uh, anime films in general. But yeah. Um, yeah, the story just didn't really connect with me as well as something like uh, this, the A Silent Voice did or um you know something that was a bit more i don't want to say grounded but a bit more relatable i guess Mm -hmm. for a for a a hopeless individual like myself (laughs) for me it was like uh i was attached um well one i watched this film um i watched it on the plane to japan on the the plane right back from japan okay it was a one of the in-flight movies and i was like i got 14 hours to kill i gotta do something Mm -hmm. um (laughs) And I, besides watching Alita for like the third time, so, <laughs> so I was like, all right, let's give this a shot. I heard about this movie. Let's get it going. I'm a big fan of the director. It's the dude, um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, it's Masaki, uh, Yuasa, the guy who's behind, uh, Tatami Galaxy, Devilman Crybaby. You know, oh, okay. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, a lot but... of good stuff. He did the, uh, he did Ping Pong the Animation. He okay. did the, you know, Night is Short, Walk On Girl. He, directed a lot of great series and anime so big fan of him um i was about to say rest in peace because he's retired but like, he's not dead no um <laughs> and, and you, no, who not. knows in this industry anybody yeah, can yeah. retire and just come back yeah, yeah he's he also did japan sinks um before i, I don't know if i said that right hmm. but yeah okay but yeah i'm a big fan of his work and this is one of the what i consider to be like one of his more tame or like i guess normal ish uh, uh type plots okay. slash series but his like signature i would say animation style is there like from science saru which i believe is the animation studio mm-hmm. and in general i mean it's a very pretty movie yes. as you would expect from a yuasa film and like again like i, I it's a it's a very tear jerky kind of movie and it, it does it gets me in some moments mm-hmm. but um yeah it wasn't that like 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 as you said i didn't feel like it was as profound as something like a silent voice like where it had something that was even more empathetic for me i think that it was a very like touching and empathetic story about finding love learning to let go moving on you know moving on from tragedy yeah um but it definitely has it that element like, yeah but it's like it's yeah. it's definitely kind of sets itself up as a third a third of it's just like the 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 sweetest romance story you've ever seen and it, it's a legit third. Like the the premise for anybody who hasn't seen the movie is that uh, you have this lovely romantic story between mm-hmm. uh, two young uh, individuals, man and woman. Uh, he's a firefighter. She's like a college age student. Like I, I don't even yeah, know. Yeah. She's in like grad school or something. She's, she's a college student that likes to surf. Yeah, exactly. And they're in like a beachside town. Uh, they spend a, more or less a year together, and then he unfortunately passes away uh, due to a tragic accident, and she kind of has to cope with it, and that's the remainder of the film. And like, it it really hits like all the the standard notes that you'd expect of a film like that. And for some people, that's like that's kind of expected, and that's what's uh, like the only thing that matters is the execution of it. And in that regards, it's executed very well. Um, the animation style is very fluid. Uh, they use a lot of neat techniques, such as uh, gyroscopic perspective, which is where you um, have the center character in the middle of the frame and then have them stationary, more or less, while the world kind of revolves around them. Makes for a really cool effect. They do a lot of like fisheye lens and... A lot of neat perspective stuff to give the sense of uh, like a, a, a like a mythical 
world, not even mythical, but a but an unreal kind of feeling for a lot of the supernatural elements that the movie has, um, mm-hmm. despite being based in the real world, more or less. Um, but for me, it's it's definitely not a movie that I would say will stick in my mind outside of its uh, visual aesthetic. And even then, there's that that can always easily be replaced by something that just mimics it and has a a bit more of a relatable story in my grasp. But I don't know. I think I think it's 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 well worth a watch if somebody sits you down to watch it. And it's it's a it's a decent, I would say like date night movie if you've been dating the person for a while um oh yeah for sure but like yeah. I, I wouldn't put it anywhere in like significant anime movies that you have to watch <laughs> you know what i mean that's not like a top 10 movie but i mean i think it's a very enjoyable film and like i think that a lot of people will will who haven't seen it yet yeah should give it the opportunity it's, i mean like you said at the very least the visual splendor yeah of Ride Your Wave is something that, you know, is enough to kind of warrant the uh, the 90-some minutes that it's going to take you to get through it. So it's not exactly... Oh, yeah. Uh, that 90 teeth. minutes is just enough. <laughs> <laughs> maybe a little, kind of all maybe a little too much, but I'm a busy man, so maybe that's maybe that's on me. <laughs> there you go. Free up some more time for cartoons. Absolutely. Especially if I'm going to talk about them for more time. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But speaking of not watching enough cartoons, you have been watching mm. something that you don't know anything about. Well, kind of, sort of. Fuck it. Yeah, I should. I, you know what? One of these days, I'm gonna like. I'm probably maybe even right after this. I'm gonna start watching Attack on Titan from the beginning. <laughs> now, right now, I probably watched like maybe one. I from the beginning, I watched two. I want to say maybe three episodes of the first season, and then I stopped back when it premiered, and I was like. This is okay, but it's like, it's trying to be dark, and it's succeeding mildly, and I'm currently reading Berserk, and it's just not, like, oh, I don't that's know. too much. Maybe, 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 maybe there was, much. like, a, a little bit of, like, uh, overload of that type of genre or something yeah. like that. <laughs> but, like, I was like, it's not clicking. So I was like, I'll come back to it eventually. This then won't blow fast up. Fast forward, this thing blows up. <laughs> you got, like... Attack on Titan live action movie, you got Attack on Titan cross Marvel, you got Attack on Titan, like, all this crap that, like, it takes over the world. And my favorite, Attack on High School, or whatever that thing is called. (laughs) Yeah, whatever the fuck happens. Attack on Titan blows up, becomes a masterpiece, or whatever the fuck, and, like, goes on, and now here we are, season four, final season of the anime, and it's like, they switch it up, pass it on from Wiz to Mappa, and then I'm like, you know what? I'll watch the final season. <laughs> but that one, because I don't know why. Because I'm with my friends and they're watching it. So I'm like, sure. So I don't have any context for what's happening for those of you who are Attack on Titan fans and truly enjoying the fourth season as it is intended, you mm-hmm. know, by reading and or watching everything up until that point. Yes. Um, all I know is that Aaron's still alive, I guess. So, <laughs> I was like, I'm very confused as to where we are and who everyone is. <laughs> so, so I barely remember. So this anybody is, besides Aaron. So. This is equi- equivocal to when I. But there was some was, pretty dope stuff that happened immediately. Yeah. You know, in the beginning. Yeah. Exactly. But this is this like, is I'm just somewhat equivalent to when you all were watching the last season of Game of Thrones and I just plopped myself next to y'all <laughs> having not watched any of it beforehand. I think yeah, I yeah, also yeah. I also saw the first and a bit of the second episode of that show and just sat down mm. for the final season. But for that one, you all were kind of rolling your, your eyes and squirming with the quality. I was really... You were forgiving. With regards to Game of Thrones, you were forgiving. I really about liked. Shit. Yeah, yeah. I I really liked the first three or four episodes of Game of Thrones, like through the Battle of Winterfell and Long Gone. It's really just how it ends mm-hmm. that kind of uh, is a little bit sour, mm-hmm. and the overall totality of the experience. But it's such a wonderful journey that, like, for me, I'm still able to kind of like be like that was that was still you know worth you know absolutely worth the time. Yeah. Um, and I'm like just sitting the, there just like, I don't know, it's not that bad. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. But not and having people... taken the journey that everybody else has. Exactly. And I know some other people that are like, watch Dexter, and they're like, why did I even start it to end it like this, mm. you know? <laughs> yeah. The worst of all time is lost, I think, in terms of people being disappointed. Mm-hmm. But that's going to happen for that type of show. can never get it back but then and and so that's what i've because i've watched attack on titan all up until this season because i just haven't kept up and what i've enjoyed about it is that i don't care about the mysteries at this point i've just come to really enjoy the cast and the characters and where their motivations lie and how they've Mm -hmm. evolved and developed over this like incredibly arduous journey um so that like it's funny to hear somebody come in being like i don't know what's happening but shit's cool <laughs> i guess <laughs> like, I, you, you, they shoot the titans down because 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 <laughs> like my uh, mild spoilers in this in the sense of what not not details but in sense of what to expect i've heard that the show doesn't end fantastically i've heard hmm. that the manga doesn't end superbly but I'm kind of okay with that because again, like this journey has just been so such a huge arc for so many of these characters that there's only like one or two things I really want. And I'd be surprised if I don't get it. And other than that, it's just been like this incredible, this really well realized, uh, fantasy drama that's been played out both in terms of like a, a political drama and like, social commentary and stuff like that some of the social commentary is a little heavy-handed but like even in those regards i think it's handled relatively well it's weighted itself pretty well and like in particular Mm -hmm. the third season like the third season takes a weird sidestep into a like a political coup uh not to trigger anybody listening to this on its release date um oh my god but (laughs) it, it goes into this weird political coup that like is very satisfying because it both reveals a lot of answers as well as like creates a lot of opportunity for the cast to really shine and uh Mm -hmm. it's it's just kind of nice to see that it's going to end before it it, uh kind of wears out its welcome but we'll see how it ends i i I definitely like when a series knows when to pull the plug like i feel like with so many (laughs) gas and with like um how should I say? Uh, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, and like the enemies that chunk and Gurren, like enemies that kind of, I feel like they have the perfect amount of content, yeah. and they 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 build a very vast and you know expansive world, but they kind of they they make sure they tell the story within you know within its means. Absolutely, so and like. Because, you know, I, I, I appreciate the, the people who enjoy their One Piece, their Dragon Ball and stuff like that. But it's like, I don't know. I like I like characters to be relatable. And for your character to be relatable over like an extensive period of time means that they're going to have to get kind of normal. And the problem is, is that you can't do that in these fictional tales like everything always has to be exciting in some format so i i I really always prefer a short story but like you know i don't always get it but we'll see like berserk hasn't ended and dragon ball continues to exist and one piece continues to exist and blah 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 as is bleach bleach is coming back and it's like why <laughs> yep i don't know why? when i mean i probably could google it right now but <laughs> i mean it's there's a market for that and also i know there's a sort of there's a differentiation i understand you and i are, are more enjoyable of something concise because there's like a more palpable sense of meaning of closure absolutely of with things like one piece for me in particular as a fan it's like there's something about the journey in this one case that has not worn out its welcome somehow. Like I, I have, I've enjoyed many a long form, uh, form of media, <laughs> you know, <laughs> many a long form, like you know, all of Naruto, all of uh, a decent amount of Bleach, um, you know, 
I've read the entirety of the Lord of the Rings and the Silmarillion and the fucking Hobbit, and it's like those types of long form uh, of uh, of entertainment, mm-hmm. of storytelling. It's like you really have to to punctuate the a sort of style in your storytelling to kind of go ahead and kind of pair well with the type of information and, and, and narrative that you're going to be drawing out so that it doesn't ever feel like it's it's not giving enough, you know, or if it's giving too much. I mean, I think you know? I think the best way to capture my attention in that regard is to have a Odyssey style, like long stream adventure where it's just your your cast and crew um mm-hmm. coming into contact with different like different parts of the world and different you know problems and stuff like that like you can't have you can't have ever ever changing arcs you can't have like you can't have the goku syndrome of like the 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 struggle to always get stronger you you have to instead have a cast that's you know continuously trying to achieve a goal but ultimately Mm -hmm. coming in contact with different forces of nature whether they be like human or otherwise Mm -hmm. and that's what would make it more interesting because that's what keeps the the tale relative like you almost get biblical at that point or 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 odyssey style Mm -hmm. um because again you're you're just you're you're using these characters as a as a driving force to tell tales that you know are relatable to the average joe and thus you know are somewhat self-contained even if they do exist within a, a a straight line canon um but that's very difficult because I think some people kind of want to see progress. So like you have to kind of balance that as well. It, mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's a challenge. Hmm. You know, creating the type of progression without, you know, giving and taking. Alas, I'm not sure. What else do we want to talk about? <laughs> Oh, we can kind of cap it I off. I through my list pretty quickly. We can kind of cap it off there if you want. I know we want to do like a roundup of the year, but I don't think we have our our thoughts together on that just yet. Um, no, no, yeah. Still want to, I'm still digesting content literally from last year. Yeah, so, um, and we don't really have a roundup for the new year just year yet. Too. You were throwing out some stuff, but it was mostly just sequels and god knows sequels are like the bane of there are a lot of sequels (laughs) um oh uh (laughs) i'll 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 briefly go over yakuza 7 if you want to talk about that for a bit because i've been playing that um sure yakuza 7 is interesting um so we i don't know how much we talked about it i think we got rid of a podcast where i talked more about it but Yakuza 7 is the first in the series to go into a JRPG uh, turn-based style combat system as opposed to the normal action-based RPG uh, style system that it, that the series has been known for. Mm-hmm. And it's weird. It's really, really weird. Um, <laughs> because the game is not like balanced around that. It's like pace is not really well balanced around that because it, it it just really feels like every every battle is like at, at least every battle still takes about the same amount of time to go through but instead of it being a little bit it wasn't it was never that fast paced but it was somewhat fast paced because of the action orientation part to it mm-hmm. now that almost that exists that pretty much doesn't exist so now you're just spending that time going through menus and usually it's not very well balanced. So you're usually like pressing the same shit over and over and over again. <laughs> so the gameplay ain't super solid. Um, the mini games in it are a lot of fun, um, but they have no correlation to the main plot. Like they'll just appear in the plot to tell you that they exist. And then like 
do them or don't do them who cares like <laughs> so it it it's just weird man it's just really weird but like I, I guess the I don't even know what I'm trying to get to with like my review of it so far but it's like I want to like a lot of people have been liking Yakuza 7 a lot um, but I feel like it's for the same reason that people have been liking the Yakuza series for a while and maybe more people have just hopped on because it's not called Yakuza 7 it's called Yakuza Like a Dragon and it has a new protagonist and like it's sort of a soft reboot um, so it's an easier jump off point for a lot of people but I don't know man I'm, I'm a little concerned for the series I, I wouldn't I don't know where it's gonna go from here yeah, I've seen content from it. I don't know anything narratively about it, but I mean, from like the gameplay side of it, it looks much more cinematic now, obviously, since it's like you controlled, uh, controlled combat. But yeah, I, I would hope that they would go back to the action. I've played Yakuza before. I really do like the like the kind of brawler style action that you can kind of go around and knock you know knock heads all over Tokyo. Yeah. But um, yeah, we'll have to see and see what they can decide to, to move forward with if they feel like this is a successful formula. Hmm. They may just stick it out. I'm um, sure. Personally, it's, I'm I sure it's Sega way a, cheaper. They reuse animations a bunch in this time, system. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know. We'll see. I'm just yeah, waiting yeah, for them seven to make just the new okay. Virtual Fighter. <laughs> oh my god, I forgot. Well, you know, Virtual Fighter Five online exists in Yakuza 7 <laughs> or is it Yakuza 6 I can't I know. remember I hate them <laughs> it's like it the was, best way to play like, that are game are you joking it's the best way oh, you disgust me <laughs> <laughs> I was so pissed <laughs> but yeah at least there is quote unquote a new virtual fighter coming I guess so we'll see what that looks like they say it's gonna be like a reset or like more esportsy Oh god, that's whatever always, that means. That's always, for the game that's always a slight kiss of death. But we'll see. I know, right? <laughs> I see. The more I hear about Strive, oh my god, we're going to get off topic. The more I hear about Strive and the more I see of it, I'm like, people are going to be upset. <laughs> like, they're going to be really yep. upset with that game. <laughs> but we're going to buy it. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm gonna oh buy it. yeah. And like, it's going to be the exact, like, Maybe not to the degree that Street Fighter V was, where, like, on top of it being simplified and pissing people off for that reason, it had, Street Fighter V had a bunch of other, like, egregious mm. sins on its tally that, like, made people understandably hate it. But, like, yeah, Strive is just gonna, like, slow down a lot of the gameplay that I think a lot of people have come to appreciate, and, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's going to lose some of its core audience, yeah, no, which I, I don't playing, think it uh, could have. I don't think it can afford to do that. Street Fighter can because Street Fighter's a that was the main IP, comp- but like <laughs> I don't think Guilty Gear can afford it. <laughs> to be quite honest, yeah, yeah. Exert slash Revelator was like already like when we were starting to play that. Like me and my friends we were like, this is a significantly slower than Accent Core. And, like, we were like, this is a lot easier to execute on than Accent Core. So, like, there was already a noticeable drop in speed and then difficulty when you got to current gen Guilty Gear. And take that and dumb it down even further somehow (laughs) in Strive. I'm like, wow, this is really, really simple. (laughs) Like, when we were playing the demo, we were playing the beta um, a few weeks ago. We're like, damn, you can just do shit and like take 60 percent life <laughs> like, yeah it's so weird and it's like something it i have really to, high it's something i have to think about a bit because it's like there there's this weird kind of balance and like preferences and stuff like that where it's like i don't want i don't know it's like it's like why does why why does it seem like complexity goes alongside with speed for some reason i don't know it's, it's a weird correlation between the two and I, mm-hmm. I i don't know where it, i don't know what causes what but we'll have to we'll have to, think we'll have to it, wait but... and see but in the meantime mm-hmm. we'll just uh i think that's all i have on my docket i don't know if you have anything on, on yours you want to talk about no i think we've got enough for today i'm pretty sure we got you know get warm back up into the year so we're gonna just you know we'll we'll, we'll leave it there grease the wheels and then hit the ground running for the next podcast i hope that 
if you stuck around this far, you know, God knows how many minutes this is going to be after it's edited, but still, it's definitely 30 plus. So thank you for listening, mm -hmm. of course, as always. Um, if you guys have any thoughts about the anime we talked about, Ride Your Way, the video games, you know, etc., etc., leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear your thoughts. If you had fun, like it, sub it, all the good stuff on the YouTube, because that's where it's mostly at right now. I'm going to get this on Spotify hopefully soon if we can get the RSS feed thing going right. And I think that's all for now. We got the Twitters, we got the EIE, the, the Instas. We'll have all that linked down the doobly doo. Um, but as always, I hope you guys have a good day. Have a good knife. Good knife. Good life. Mm -hmm. Good knife fight. Good new year. Good knife fight. <laughs> GG. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Take care. <laughs>